Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back here. Um, we always enjoy our time feeling like we're in dialogue with everyone here and being able to share in the vibration, also bringing the words into music and resonating there and then moving on to the next concept. And we thank you for sharing it with us this morning. It's really nice that there was a toning group here before. I can kind of feel the positive energy through the whole building. It's really nice. Yeah. I realize with, the, um, with all the fans going on, since it's so hot here, I might be looking like I'm flying in this today because I feel this <laughs> sort of billowing as behind me anyway. Um, in our work, um, we have two aspects um, that we focus on in the vibrational world. Um, but it encompasses all of the, the frequencies that bring us into wholeness. And our, our company, Resonating Wellbeing, is uh, featuring all of the, the new things that have come into our life, but we have been together doing music, um, I full-time for the last 25 years, and we've been a couple for 24 years now. <laughs> so we do uh, have some personal masculine and feminine energy and wisdom to share on that level as well as on the vibrational level. And with our work, we love to look at all the different ways that our vibrational energy can help us to understand our wholeness. And with the topic this morning, which is balancing the divine masculine and feminine energies, um, we're going to talk a lot about harmonizing and how that is um, and how that brings us into an energetic oneness. Um, one of the new areas that we've been going into is studying with Dr. Jeffrey Thompson in Carlsbad, California. He was in the, featured in the movie Heal, and he has a biotuning system that um, finds the vibration of your state of homeostasis. And one of the interesting things that came out of that was we found out that Diana and I actually have the same frequency um, when it's down to a one hundredth of a half step. So there's a one in 1,200 chance of that. Um, so it was very interesting when you divide a half step, which is like just one white note to one black note on the piano by a hundred that we were matching in what our homeostasis is based on our heart rate variability. Right. Do you want to talk yeah, about and the, the and the next piece of that that I that occurred to me as we were thinking about this topic of divine feminine and masculine and mixing energies, then I realized in our biotuning, one of um, the first step is, is basically finding a frequency that's your peak, your optimal, where you're harmonizing, where you're balanced, and there's a lot of energies that cross over there, and when you have that crossover, that particular frequency is your optimal, and we use that then to um, include in the soundscapes that we create. But the second part is a voice print. And when you take a voice print, uh, because it's so unique to you, and you add it into the soundscapes, it really um, connects a lot of your identity, and it moves you into some places that maybe it was a little harder to go into for yourself before, and supports you like nothing else. So during the time we were finding our voice prints, um, I thought, well, that's interesting. They're very close. Uh, how odd, you know, because we have this other frequency that's, that's the same pitch. I looked at it again for the exact sense, which is the, the one hundredth uh, divider that you have, and we were 0.5 away in hertz, which basically means in our voice prints, we are binaural beats. We're just off this much or we're just differentiated just a little bit in what you use to create the binaural beats <clears throat> that you put into the music. And so in naturally just going about our lives and being who we are and talking and singing and creating, we're constantly oscillating this, this idea of creation and of expansion. 
And that was really interesting to know. And I thought to myself, I wonder how, if that's true for other couples who've been together for a while or, or other best friends or, you know, your children. I just think that's interesting. In our work with biotuning, we will find out how that relates with people. Anyway, I thought that was cool. Yeah, the other part that relates more to feminine and masculine is our brain dominance. It takes that into account as well. And I'm more right brain dominant, and Diana is more left brain dominant. So we've sort of got that masculine, feminine, uh, traditional characteristic yeah. as well. Right, yeah, that's typical. And, and that surprised me at first because I was thinking for me and for Jage, I feel like there's a lot of um, crossover in that. The energy, when we're talking about it between the two of us, we always talk about the yin and the yang. We're talking about frequencies. It's a very small percentage of the time that we would talk about um, or refer to the femi feminine or the masculine of things. So it was really neat the last couple weeks to have that on topic on our minds and the wonderful conversations that we had, sharing experiences of how we relate to that, where it came from for us and why we don't generally spend a lot of time there, um, but how we naturally just groove that way. So, um, Divine feminine and divine masculine can kind of be a charged topic for people, so I'd like to go through a very short visualization just to kind of set the tone and help everyone relax. And what I'd like you to do is to imagine that you have a small control panel and it has two buttons on it. One button says play and the other says pause. And first, I'll describe what the button does. Um, the pause button, it puts everything outside of this room on hold. Life just pauses for you. It has an automatic reset when you leave, so it'll pop right back when you go out the door. But for now, I'd like you to press your pause button and put everything else on hold so you can be present in the now. And then the play button, you'd think it was to start things playing again. But in this case, the play button is to give yourself permission to play, to play around with ideas. You don't have to identify with what you thought before. You don't need to decide whether or not something's right for you in this moment. You can just play with an idea, see how it feels without any prejudgments. So for right now, I'd like you to press your play button. And with that, I'd like to uh, start discussing the divine feminine and masculine from our point of view. Um, everyone's point of view is very different on it whether or not something is feminine or masculine. And one of the ways I learned that is that when I was growing up, it became apparent to me that there was a imbalance in feminine and masculine energy around me. And that became apparent quickly because both of my parents pointed it out to me constantly. If there was a commercial on TV, how it was sexist, or a, a movie, how, how the roles would be sexist in that, or the pay discrepancy that was out there, or the opportunities for jobs being different for men and women. And so they made that very obvious to me. And you could tell at the time that the sort of the leading edge of where that balance conversation was going was saying that it was okay for people who were females to do something that was considered traditionally, socially more masculine. And it was okay for males to do something that was traditionally more feminine or um, th to have a feminine characteristic as part of their personality. And so that was, um, you could see that in some of the movies like Mr. Mom, where the, the man is taking on the roles of the traditionally socially feminine and it's a comedy, of course. And uh, other movies where, like, say, a, a girl would be playing baseball. So that they were saying underneath in the themes of those that it was okay for that to be um, a characteristic or uh, an activity that they would do. And some of that, I realized, looking back, came from 
my parents' conversation at the leading edge of feminine and masculine was more about things being equal. So in, um, in their mythos or uh, stories, you would have the, um, the fisherman and his wife where they swapped roles and then they respected each other's house cleaning or fishing and they decided, okay, let's go back to our traditional roles and it's okay and I respect what you do now. So more of a equal but different and that position with my generation moved into more of a it's okay for someone to do what is traditionally considered the other. And I think that the cutting edge now um, is moving not only is it okay, but it's empowering to have both of those within you, to have the feminine and the masculine. Um, how that applies to what I experienced is my mom would make dolls and she was making my sister a custom doll for her and she didn't want me to feel left out, so she made me a doll as well. And that was um, not considered odd at all for them, teaching us that it's okay to have the traditional roles reversed. I would go over to my grandma's house. She had a doll house and dolls, and I wasn't allowed to play with it, but my sister was. So she had a very different view. So I saw that people had different views on the subject. And um, then there was this uh, TV show, uh, Free to Be You and Me, that I saw. And one of the little um, snippets in it was a story about William, who has a doll. And all the other kids would pick on the boy for having a doll because it's a girl thing. And uh, the reason that he wanted this doll was because he liked the idea of taking care of children. And it was uh, one of those cutting edge programs at the time. Right. So Free to Be You and Me came into my household too, but I was in probably a less progressive household than uh, Jage grew up in. We had very traditional roles and there were very specific uh, guidelines for what was thought to be your responsibility on either side of the feminine and masculine, very traditional. But um, we did have some um, unique circumstances. So when, for you, when that program came out and you saw yourself in that, that scenario, I saw myself in a song that they did that was um, this very large football player, wonderful man named Rosie Greer, came out and sang, it's all right to cry, right? And if you've never heard it, it's like, it's all right to cry, crying lets the sad out of you. It's all right to cry. It might make you feel better. And so, and it goes on and on, and it talks about the raindrops from your eyes washing all the sad out of you, and it talks about feelings come and go, and there's so many, they change and change and change. And this, this particular idea, of course, was so cutting edge that this man would come out and sing this song for all the children in this program. But... I, just, I saw this, uh, this person as freeing for myself, even though I was a little girl. I had a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. I came into a family that had a lot of, uh, we had a, a special needs, some challenges for my older brother, and I was the one in charge, and then there was two other siblings, and so for the most part, I was telling myself most of the time not to cry because things were my responsibility to take care of a lot of things and to smooth a lot of things over to do the extra work. And so I was finding in that moment that I was identifying with a different role and finding the release because I, I saw that there was, it was this, you know, larger man saying that while I knew that my father or my brother or anyone else wasn't supposed to, you know, look weak or cry. Um, and, but it was insistent that I did not either in my household. 
You know, don't cry. There's no crying. You know, you got to get stuff done. Crying you don't do. So there was so many things that for the two of us in that free to be you and me in the 70s that came out that really hit on a lot of cutting edge things. And it's one of the reasons that I feel so strong and I'm always talking about having arts and music and things in the schools because if we can bring that kind of um, talk to children who are eight years and, and younger into their lives there, they're going to be able to be in the surroundings that they're in. They're also going to be able to see a different reflection and have an idea that will guide them as they go on, that there's other ways that are happening out there in the world around them that they can participate in, and maybe it will be something that's freeing for them. So what we thought we'd do is take that main theme from that particular program and share some of the, the energy of what it's like when we're talking about free to be you and me, the name of the program. We're going to talk about the divine and the masculine, free to be you and me, whatever that means to us, it's all energy. So I'm going to step over. I wish I could clap and do this at the same time, but this, <clears throat> go ahead. Let's feel that. There's a land that I see where the children are free and they say it ain't far to this land from where we are. Take my hand, come with me Where the children are free Come with me, take my hand And we'll live In a land where the river runs free In a land to a green country In a land with a shining sea And you and me free to be you and me I see a land bright and clear and the time's coming near in this land you and me we will walk hand in hand take my hand come along lend your voice to my song come along take my hand and sing a song for a land where the river runs free for a land through the green country for a land to a shining sea for a land horses run free and you and me are free to be you and me every boy in this land grows to be his own man in this land every girl grows to be her own woman take my hand come with me where the children are free come with me take my hand and we'll run to a land where the river runs free to a land through the green country to a land to a shining sea to a land where the horses run free to a land where the children are free and you and me are free to be and you and me are free to be and you and me are free to be you and me Thank you. So hopefully we feel a little
little freer of that, get a little bit of clapping energy and all that out. <laughs> I really love the fact that I was able to grow up with a program uh, like Free to Be You and Me, the, the next program that really meant a lot to me at that time was uh, being able to watch Mr. Rogers. And uh, for me, Mr. Rogers, he was my hero. Um, again, it was another role that I identified with, again, seeing a male in this position who was talking to children like they were an equal, and he was expressing a lot of leading edge conversation, and he was using his crafts and his skills with music and his, his ideas with puppetry, and he could get onto a lot of areas where it felt safe to talk about things that maybe in other areas it felt a little bit too risky. And being that I was a very, very uh, shy child, I wouldn't speak at all um, outside my family or my very best friend. Um, for a lot of years, I sort of struggled with being able to uh, voice anything um, to the point where in my school days in kindergarten and first grade, you know, my teachers would have conference and tell my mom to make sure I spoke up in class or my grades would go down, and it just made a lot of pressure for me <laughs> to try to figure that out. But when I found a way to imagine and listen to Mr. Rogers talking in conversations and that he sung out the most vibrant things, I learned to sing first and sing out my most vibrant things, and then I learned to be able to share that with my words. So I just want to give an homage to him because I love, love that that movie has come out again to celebrate him and to reinvigorate um, the need, I think, that, that we should keep fulfilling to share with creativity and uh, with a vib vibrant uh, sense of ourselves. So um, I, I appreciate those, those cutting edge places that we grew up with and I hope they continue. Um, one of the things that tends to be a, sort of a clincher when it comes to figuring out what's feminine and masculine is when we start to identify, well, you know, I'm a male, I should have just masculine, right? Get rid of the feminine, or I'm a female, I should be more feminine. Let's um, try and avoid those masculine traits. And it all kind of stems from how we categorize things. You know, this is one way or this is the other. And the categorization itself isn't a bad thing. Our, our brains do that uh, just to help us get through the day, you know. If you see a pattern, um, you want to be able to predict what's coming up the next time you see that pattern. So the, um, the actual categorization in itself isn't, isn't a bad thing. It's, it's something that we want to do. And any time we perceive something, we are going to put it in a category because we have to interpret what it is. And really what that's, what's happening is it's, it's our own perspective which comes from the society that raised us, our, uh, our own experiences. And so it's actually telling us more about ourselves at the same time what our perspective is when we can be aware of how we're categorizing things. And um, so, like, for instance, if I'm thinking, you know, is this something big or is this something small as far as a physical object, and I take a hair, well, I go, well, that's something that's small. Now, if I'm looking at things as a scientist and I'm um, taking things from the point of DNA, how big is that hair? It's, it's ginormous. So it's really showing us what perspective we're looking at things from. And something to remember when we're thinking about perspective is that we can shift our perspective. So when we're categorizing things, it's telling us what our perspective is that we're looking at things from. When we're looking at animals, I know that, you know, I can classify and categorize things as, well, this is a bird, or this is a mammal, an amphibian, lizard, insect, fish, whatever. 
But as soon as I start to figure out those rules and something comes along like a platypus, then I go, oh, um, that's not a bird, it's not a mammal, so what, where do I put that? Well, that tells me what my perspective was when I was looking at it. I was thinking, oh, you know, I know all about birds, I know all about mammals, and then there's the platypus, and it says to me, how can I revise the way that I'm categorizing animals, and why am I categorizing animals in the first place? And it's just to, to try and predict, you know, okay, that's a bird that's going to behave like a bird, that's a mammal that's going to do these mammal-like activities, but really I don't need to have that sort of categorization. And when I notice that categorization, I can open up and be more reflective and be open to not knowing how something's going to behave. Right, yeah, and, the, and what the, the being open to the not knowing has been such an intriguing place for us to be because so much of our work has to do with the vibration and the energetic um, stance of things and so there's there's a lot of places where things are becoming and they're harmonizing and there isn't any need to really put um, particular um, structure on it when you're looking at it in a creative way um, or just revealing more of itself and so when we um, look at ourselves in the masculine feminine just reflecting on this we had a lot of conversations about how we were looking at that energy the yin and yang we were looking at it in the perspective of one so for us there isn't a this and a that a yin and a yang it is a whole that moves and when it's over here it's moving this way and it's moving that way and it's moving this way and it's moving that way, but it's always in relationship. Always there is a relationship. So there's a dominance of vibration that's flowing in one direction or another direction, but it's always whole. And with that, um, we tend to view the world all around us, like nature, for instance, and um, really keep learning about what perspectives and things that we have held and what things keep um, refreshing themselves and becoming part of a whole and kind of offering a new definition. One of the interesting vibrational aspects that we uh, learned recently, you know, as you were reflecting on the platypus, it's its own category, you know, same thing comes along, you know, we've got a seahorse and then, you know, they want to have that going in a different direction for the, the birthing process. They have it switch roles with that. But I was uh, learning that there's two things energetically in the natural world when it comes to sea turtles, which I personally am a sea turtle person, and I love them. But I learned that, you know, in their uh, behavior, the woman, female, whatever you want, I like to say woman, a turtle, is usually the one leading on the path back to the place for the birth. And they have a wonderful sense of direction. They have a very wonderful sense of routing in a magnetism sort of way to know how they're getting where they're going. Their spatial relations are very keen. And the male turtles do, do not have this ability. They have found that they're not as able to do that. And what they do is they, they work with the females. And so if they want to go back to the certain area, they follow with the female. And there isn't any right, wrong, or whatever I'm imagining in the turtle world. I'm imagining it's both and. There's, I know which way to go, and you know which way to go. Let's go. Right? It's, it's not a division like we sometimes put in, in our human world. And the other thing that I learned that was fascinating is that when they do get to where they're going, the temperature, the vibration, the vibratory heat from the sun, or the tamping down, the lack thereof, defines the sex of the dominance of that nest. So when it's the warmest out, there will be many more females that will be born to that nest. They will be dominant. And when it's cooler, it will be the males. And I found that that energetically is interesting in, in a wholeness 
you know, where does that fit into the wholeness of the picture? It was just another way of nature revealing another perspective, another facet that we can consider. So we love to remain open to all kinds of things that, you know, the traditional roles of our parents, the roles that we grew up thinking that we identified with or that we had when we were children. And we love to just take everything we've learned and have it be both and, be able to include everything and expand that to be even more. So I thought I'd follow that up with the vibratory feeling of a, a song that, that most of us will know um, <clears throat> that does come with a very rich story uh, from about around the same sort of time period of when um, things were moving into that 70s when Free to Be You and Me and topics of who are we were coming about. And it's just nice to open up and be able to say, I know all this and I know all that, and there's so much more I, I want to know, and not knowing is fine. <clears throat> Rows and flows of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air and feather canyons everywhere i've looked at clouds that way but now they only block the sun they rain and snow on everyone so many things i would have done but clouds got in my way i've looked at clouds from both sides now from up and down and still somehow it's clouds illusions i recall i really don't know clouds at all moons and junes and ferris wheels the dizzy dancing way you feel as every fairy tale comes real i've looked at love that way but now it's just another show you leave them laughing when you go and if you care don't let them show don't give yourself away i've looked at love from both sides now from give and take and still somehow it's love's illusions i recall i really don't know love at all tears and fears and feeling proud to say I love you right out loud Dreams and schemes and circus crowds I've looked at life that way But now old friends are acting strange They shake their heads, they say I have changed Well, something's lost but Something's gained in living every day. I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose. Still, somehow, it's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life. At all. I've looked at life from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow 
It's life's illusions I recall I really don't know lie at all At all Thank you. fun to um, share some of the, the songs that I've grown up with um, that I've heard so many different times apply a new topic, a new lens to it, and just kind of delve into it again, and um, it becomes something else to share, something else within me um, to share out into the world, and um, I've sung that song differently in my life before, and wanted to... Um, to share it with thinking about the, the topic today. So um, if we're going to feel into our, our power, we're going to look, I look at um, things from, from all sides. I, 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 I try to do that as my lens. Most of the time I'm looking at things musically, uh, hence vibrationally, and as resonance. And when we want to continue to stay in our power, I think it's up to the feeling sense, to use all the senses of feeling and energy to be the first lens um, to look through and then layer whatever else is around me um, on, on top of it. And it, it led me to a question. If I was going to feel into my power, into my energy of who I am, uh, that I woke up with amnesia. I didn't have, there was no reflexive mirror there. There was no reflexive family there. I wasn't able to see the outside of me and I was able to feel, who am I? I thought it was a very interesting question in relation to, to, the, to the yin, the yang, the masculine, and feminine. And I thought, well, what I would do is I would feel into what feels the most of me. What feels the most of me in my joy? What would be safe to move toward? What would feel inviting? What would make me feel eager? And what would feel most curious? And none of the ideas of what should I do for my vocation or how should I take care of um, you know, these people in some traditional sense or how um, I layer a lot of the other types of ideas about my life came to me with that question. It was all about how do I have the mix of energy within me. And I thought that that was one of the best ways that I wanted to consider um, my definitions of who I am and how people these days are um, having that opportunity offered to them to feel into their power, to feel what is aligned, to feel what is vibrationally most dominant in their being and move from there and layer the perspectives and the life that they want to fulfill with that leading on top of it. Not expecting as much as being good at all of the traditional things to bring them that sort of sense. That, of course, is a harmonic that can happen because of it. But I love and applaud from a musical and vibrational standpoint, that's a true essence of where things begin in the vibrational, then they become the manifest. Back in 2003, um, before I was talking about alignment and vibration, um, I, I would always connect emotionally and with what I knew and feeling very much so when I was doing music. But outside of that, when I was um, doing computer programming or identifying who I was, it wasn't very much to do with emotions. It was very intellectual. So I considered myself a very smart person, very based on my brain, that's where I was, not necessarily in my heart, which was kind of weird with the music being the other side. But um, so then in 2003, I found out that I had a brain tumor. Now, I knew that I was more than just 
my brain and my intellectual self. Um, that was a concept that I believed, but I really didn't explore, you know, what are those different parts of me, aside from when I was playing music, but what if I didn't have the ability to program something on my computer, or what if I didn't have the ability to write music, or what if I didn't have the ability to remember someone's face or to form a sentence, you know, who does that make me? And I had a period of two and a half weeks where I was exploring, you know, who am I if I don't have thought anymore? And, you know, what does that make me? And I really honor that experience of going through that because it brought more of a knowing and a feeling of who I would be as far as energetically and emotionally when I would see Dianum's brother who has special needs and he's just got the biggest heart in the world and you know he may not be able to um, do too many things intellectually but he can connect with people and remember people's names and he just although the, me the memory of the names isn't the important part it's just that feeling you get when you're with him he's just got such a intense sense of emotional well-being within him and the same thing happened when I would look at animals and you know be able to see into their eyes and realize that you know there isn't this sort of intellectual part to the animal but there is definitely an awareness and a wisdom and a consciousness and going through that helped me explore and find a different definition of myself that was not excluding the one, but expanding on it. So the awareness comes in many different ways. And every time I enter this building, I have an awareness that for many years, um, I wasn't able to come into the building because I wasn't able to walk up the stairs. And then for a lot of time, um, I pretty much thought that would be the way things would be. Um, I was very grateful to have these things available here on the uh, video so that I could see them at home. So for anyone who is watching this at home, um, my awareness every time I'm in here is how much I have been able to gain in learning about energetics and how much I have been able to move into my power uh, against one of those, you know, non-curable, non-treatable type of uh, suggested diagnosis they like to give. And my wellness journey, um, I'm aware every time I hear, it, it fills me up. And that naturally comes out um, sharing words and sharing music. Um, I give thanks in every note, every word that I offer. And so I chose um, for this, this last uh, song one that has very uh, specific aligning words, and I offer it as a way of understanding our power in a sense of feeling, in a sense of connection, in a sense of resonance, and a sense of all possibilities. Um, I got to see this artist, meet this artist, and many others who I admire, um, who I bring their songs out into the world. Um, but she's an award-winning uh, uh, musician from uh, Posse Fest and uh, Marcy Barouche. And I love this uh, next song I will share called Inner Space. This inner space has the power to set me free. It's the cavern of creation and the truth of you and me. This inner space, an eternity of time. It's the moment of the holy now and the allness that is mine. 
This inner space contains all that I need From deep within the invisible flows the living air I breathe This inner space it's flowing in my bones It stirs my heart, it stirs my mind It's every prayer I've ever known And I say breathe Just breathe This inner space is the ocean of my soul And when you feel most broken, the truth is you are whole This inner space connects us one to all And though it will never push you it will break down every So I say breathe Just breathe Now breathe this For this inner space invites us to renew In all my endless choosing, I become the chosen to This inner space, it never knows a past But in a quiet space you can hear it, and it might just Make you laugh. So I say, breathe, just breathe. Now breathe this peace. Thank you. So that's kind of where we will leave it for the time we have today. Um, the inner space, the inner resonance, that cavern of creation, the allness that we are, that's where your power comes and your power can be in, in many different directions, in many ways. Feel first, resonate. And taking it from that divine feminine and masculine, allowing both, being open to whatever comes, and embracing the power of having both. Thank you. Wake up in the morning with the sunshine in your eyes and the smell of flowers blooming fills the air your mind is filled with the thoughts of a certain someone that you love and your life is filled with joy when they are there Love can make you happy 
If you find someone who cares to give a lifetime to you and who has a lot to share. La 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 love can make you happy love can make you happy love can make you happy love Thank you, everyone.